He said, now during the time I worked for your father, he was not fair to me. He changed my wages many times. And as a result, God has blessed me and given me much of the wealth. Now it's time to go. And he said, this is what happened. He said that an angel appeared to him in a dream. And he said, Jacob. Jacob said, here am I. And he said, and this angel, the angel of God, in the, he said, now in this dream, look at the sheep and goats that are mating. They are speckled and spotted. For I have seen all that Laban has done to you. And I want you to be blessed. I want to bless you. And I want you to return now to your ancestral home. Now, you see, what was revealed to Jacob is that his scheme had nothing to do with the results whatsoever. It wasn't natural. It would never have happened naturally. God did it. You see what God was telling him in the dream? I did it. I brought the sheep and goats together with speckled and spotted. I caused that change in ratio where ordinarily maybe maybe 95% would be born with normal coat color. I altered the ratio so more and more we're born speckled and spotted. So the answer primarily is God did it. It was supernatural. It was not natural. Now here's the most amazing part of that story. What did the angel of God say? Look upon those sheep and goats. In the dream, they are speckled and spotted. In real life, they were not. Most of the sheep and goats that came to mate were normal coat color. So they looked like they were normal. They had normal coat color. In the dream, they were speckled and spotted. Now, in the light of modern genetics, have been developed only within the last few decades, we know what God must have done. There are genetic factors, you see, that govern all these characteristics, coat color and eye color and so forth and so on. We get one gene from our mother and one gene from our father for each characteristic. We get two sets of genes. One set of gene comes from one parent. The other set of gene comes from the other parent. So all genes occur in pairs. Now, in many cases, the genes are the same. You may have inherited a gene for brown eye color from your mother and a gene for brown eye color from your father. So you have two genes for brown eye color. You will be brown eyed, quite obviously. But you may have got one gene for brown eye color from your mother and a gene for blue eye color from your father. So you have one gene for brown eye color and one gene for blue eye color. In that case, you will be brown eyed because the gene for brown is dominant. If it's paired with the gene for blue, you will be brown eyed. The gene for blue is said to be recessive. In order to be blue eyed, you must inherit a gene for blue from your mother and a gene for blue from your father. You must have two blue genes. That's great, isn't it, kids? Everybody loves blue genes. You see, <laughs> you see what was happening here? All of the sheep and goats that got that gene for normal coat color, where it had the gene for normal coat color from both parents, it was normal coat color. Where it had the gene for normal coat color from one parent and the gene for speckling and spotting from the other parent, it was still normal coat color. Because the gene for normal coat color is dominant, you see. The other is recessive. Only if it inherits that gene, that recessive gene, we saw it, from each parent does it be speckled and spotted. And there weren't many of those genes. And if it got only one gene for normal coat color, it was normal coat color. Now, in the dream, what the angel was saying, that those things were speckled and spotted, they were carrying the recessive gene for speckling and spotting. Being paired with a gene for normal coat color, it had normal coat color. So in real life, as you looked upon these sheep and goats, they had normal coat color. The angel was revealing, however, they were carrying this hidden gene, the gene for speckling and spotting. You couldn't see it in real life, but you could see it in the dream. Now what God did, you see, he engineered things in such a way that these creatures carrying that recessive gene mated, and then as a result of that mating, you see, ordinarily three out of four would be born with no more coat color. Because if the gene for normal coat color from one parent combines with the gene for normal coat color from the other parent, of course it'll have normal coat color. 
if the gene for normal coat color from one parent combines with the gene, recessive gene for speculative and spotting from the other parent, still be normal coat color. Only where two genes, the two recessive genes combined, will they have speculative and spotting. But God interfered with this ritual. He brought an unusual number of these sheep and goats together, each one of which was carrying the recessive gene. And then he overruled the normal uh, outcome of this situation. He engineered it in such a way that an unusual number of these offspring inherited the recessive gene for speckling and spotting. God did it. It was supernatural. But you know what is so unusual about that? We would not have the slightest idea of what was going on here or how God did it for 3,000 years. From the time that scripture was written 3,000 years ago, well, they could read it and they know God did it. And they know that in the dream they were speckling and spotted. And in, in normal life, they really weren't. They would know that. But they wouldn't know why. It is only within the last few decades with our study of genetics, what well, we first we discovered genes, you see, not more than about 50 years ago, and chromosomes, and we understand how they're inherited and how they are paired and recessive and dominant genes. We only learned that in the last 10, 20, oh, about the last 40, 50 years. Only in the last few decades could we understand what God was saying in that scripture about the fact that some were speckled and spotted in the dream, but normal coat color in real life. That's, you see, that is an incredible confirmation of the scientific aspects of the Bible. In that, we could not even understand what was going on here for thousands of years until modern science had revealed the facts of genetics and how this was done. So you see, there's no scientific error here in Genesis chapter 30 and 31 at all. It wasn't a natural occurrence. It wouldn't happen the way Jacob thought it did unless God had supernaturally intervened. And now and only now in the last few years through the results of modern genetics research, do we understand how God did it? Confirming, you see, the scientific accuracy of the Bible. In my own experience as a biochemist, I have seen the confirmation of the scripture. Natural science tells us that life comes only from pre-existing life. And the Bible tells us that God created life. He is the creator. And as a biochemist, as I studied biochemistry, as I learned through my studies the incredible complexity of life, do you know that a bacterium, that little so-called simple cell, not simple at all, there's no simple form of life, very, very complicated form of life. A bacterium is so complicated, so complex, that if scientists could study it forever, I'm convinced there'd be some things about it we'd never understand. Not only is it complex, but every part must be placed together precisely, just like the mechanism of your watch. If one tiny part of your watch is misplaced, it will not function. That is true also of that living cell. In the living cell, we see the coordination in time and in space that is essential for life. Everything must be placed together precisely. We see evidence for a grand master plan. And then in that living cell, in every detail of its structure and function, we see purpose. Now I concluded as a scientist that this tremendous organization had to have an organizer. This grand master plan speaks of a master planner. And the evidence for purposefulness demands deliberate, intelligent creation. Why the notion that a living cell, even a bacterium, could just spontaneously create itself, come into existence through the agency of chemistry and physics is an absurdity. Absolute absurdity. Contradicted by all that we know in natural science. And so again, we see that modern science confirmed the scriptures that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God created life and God created man. We indeed are the special creations of God, the creator and master 
of our universe.